NEC is basically a collection of documents that include contracts, guidance notes and flowcharts. It came about in 1993. The creator was Dr Martin Barnes, if I can read a small passage from a document of that. First published as a new and innovative way of managing construction contracts in 1993, basically 25 years ago now. It was designed to facilitate and encourage good management of risks and uncertainties using clear and simple language. And that's probably the big differentiator between NEC and any other form of contract. The forms of contract in the past that have been associated with tend to dwell on the sort of negatives. What might go wrong? What will go wrong? How will we deal with things that go wrong? Whereas NEC, the big differentiator is about setting things up to succeed, to achieve good outcomes, great outcomes, outcomes that clients and their customers you know, wish to achieve. When you look at the NEC box set, there are different contracts for buying different types of things. Something for buying goods, something for buying works, something for buying services. Probably the most popular one, the engineering construction contract, is designed for buying works, usually of a fairly complicated level. So the contract itself is basically full of, full of rules, getting people to behave in certain ways, getting people to do things that are more likely to result in successful projects. So a hallmark of NEC, for example, is it's written in plain English, it's clear, it's very understandable. It's written for the everyday user to follow the clauses, understand what they've got to do, and act as a stimulus to good management. The stimulus to good management is very important to get people to focus on the end product, what it is that the, the, uh, the customer is buying or, or wishing to buy. The impact this has had on the industry is absolutely huge. Um, around the time that the, the contract was first coming out came the Latham Report in 1994 which pointed to and sort of applauded NEC and what it was trying to achieve. The behaviour that the industry had before pre-Latham was very adversarial. Um, lots of litigation, lots of chaos, lots of disputes, lots of people squabbling over matters to do with the contract. I think subsequent to that, NEC I think has helped reduce the number of disputes uh, and actually help people focus on achieving each other's directives. A quite different sort of upside down attitude and mindset to that which we had before NEC was introduced. Users of NEC are those clients who perhaps want to do um, business in a different way than they have done in the past. That they would like the parties to collaborate, to engage together, to have a no-surprise approach, to set things up properly to achieve better outcomes. Certainly in the UK, in the, in the um, civil engineering sector, this is by far the dominant contract. But similarly, in the public sector in the UK, it is the dominant contract. And will become so in the likes of Hong Kong, where from, from last year, I think it was, uh, government said, you shall use NEC unless there's a good business case, why not to? So there's an expectation of using NEC. There's been some massive infrastructure projects, uh, such as the 2012 London Olympic Games, Heathrow Terminal 5, Crossrail, Delhi International Airport, Halley 6 in Antarctica, and more. And more recently, of course, High Speed 2 is using NEC to procure. We're, we're a different industry than we were 20 years ago, far more vibrant, far more exciting. Still creates some fabulous things, some terrific infrastructure all around the world. But the attitude and mindset and the culture that this contract helps us bring to projects, so that perhaps is the excitement of using this form of contract, rather than the typical sort of blame approach that we used to have in the past. Here's a problem, you must have caused it, you've got to fix it. Um, you know, out with the old, in with the new. So our challenge at NEC going forward is it equally exciting as you know, we are in a smart world and with our smartphones and our smart cities and our smart everything, so will come demands from users to, to ever improve the contracts. NEC is on its fourth generation of contracts, so if you like NEC 1 came out in 93, NEC 2 1995, NEC 3 in 2005, NEC 4 last year came out in 2017. It's evolution rather than revolution in each successive form. We're introducing this year a brand new NEC 4 Alliance contract, greater involvement of you know, so many people on the project to get their expertise to help achieve client requirement. So looking forward at what we want in the future, of course, is some brilliant ideas from up and coming generations of engineers to help us 
keep this absolutely at the top of the pile of you know, progressive contracts that allow people to do business in a far more smarter way. So if you are thinking of a career in engineering, don't just think that it's about, you know, uh, perhaps the environment, you know, design or something like that. There are so many attributes to engineering beyond just design or problem solving, such as helping us write contracts, standard forms of the future.